Wasabi, you guys. Welcome to Integration B Training for Intermediates Part 22. In this section, we'll be dealing with Dirichlet integrals. I think that's how you pronounce it. Dirichlet? Dirichlet? I don't know. But, <clears throat> pretty much, uh, it's going to be looking like this. And you might have seen this integral before. But it's this famous integral. Okay, from 0 to infinity sine of x over x, this is equal to pi over 2. And I believe this is an, inf an even function. So I believe that this could possibly be equal to pi. I, I'm pretty sure. I think it would make sense because, I mean, this is an even function, so you could just kind of do symmetry. Yeah. So I think this would equal to pi uh, for negative infinity to infinity. However, you don't usually, you just don't usually come across this. You just come across these bounds from zero to infinity. That's that's all. But yeah, mainly we'll be looking at this because this is the most common. And uh, another thing I want to show you is Whenever you see something like this, like 2024x over x dx, just ignore whatever is inside of here. This is just pi over 2. It's always going to be pi over 2. And I can, I can show you that very quickly. Right? This for, for any real number of a. Right? If I let u equal a of x. Then I'm just. This is just going to equal to like one over a. Infinity to zero, sine of u, and then u here. Well, what is x? Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. What is x? So x. This x is equal to u over a. So u over a. I mean, the bottom. This is already in the bottom, already. So this. And this is going to cancel out sine of u over u. Do u? It's still going to equal to pi over two. Right? The constants are going to cancel each other out because of this x, because of this. So I just kind of want to show you that, just for simplicity. Okay. So what do we do here? This looks like a Dirichlet integral, but not quite. Not quite. Uh, here it's actually very hard to see but what you could do it's very sneaky it's actually a little hard to see but x squared sine x cubed if you multiply x squared top and bottom ah now you let u equal x cubed let u equal x cubed and now what we have is like one third of the Dirichlet integral. And so now this is equal to pi over 6. Okay. This looks nasty, right? Someone would tell you, oh, you know, just, I don't know, use some Feynman technique or something. No, let's, 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 let's do something easier. Let's, let's not, let's not get too crazy. So this is just a trig identity, right? If you know your trig identity, I'm just going to dive right in because this is sine of 8 of x. Just for the sake of time, I'll just dive right in. This is sine 2x all over 2x dx. Right, we know how to deal with this with trig identities. It's the sine wall. So now, here, again, like I said, it doesn't matter what the constants are. This is pretty much a half. Pi over 2 plus pi over 2. This is equal to pi over 2. So this looks crazy. <laughs> and honestly, it kind of is of a crazy integral. But let's let's calm down. Let's just kind of try to, to sort of put this in terms of the Dirichlet integral. Now, we will be doing integration by parts with sine cube and 1 over x, uh, x cube. 
So now what we have is this would give us, let's see, this would be give us negative 3 sine square cosine x, right? And then here, this would give us a negative 1 over 2x squared. And then, oh god, oh, let's just kind of gain some balls to, to, to just do product rule. Let's just, let's just, just, just dive straight into product rule. Let me abbreviate this. So this is 6 sine squared of s. So yeah, 6, 6s. Six uh, with c square and then minus with 3 sine cube right and this is what we would get with product rule c square this would just be a negative sign yeah I believe so and then here this would just be like 1 over 2x Okay. Oh god. <laughs> so, this is what we would have. So, negative sine cube of 2x squared um, minus this 3 sine squared cosine. Oh god, and then plug this into 0 to infinity. Honestly, this is just going to be like, this would actually equal to zero by squeeze theorem. So technically, yeah, this, this would all equal to zero by squeeze theorem. So, ooh, disgusting. Very nasty. Very nasty stuff. Okay. So then we're left off with integral from 0 to infinity and we have like 2x of let's see this is let's make this into I'm just gonna quickly let's see 6s mm, not 6s I'm gonna factor 3s out we get 2 cosine square minus uh, sine square I'm just going to see if I could just sort of shortcut this because honestly this is just disgusting. Uh, this is cosine squared plus cosine of 2x. Yeah. Oh, and then 3 sine cosine squared plus 2 cosine squared minus 1. And then we get 3 sine uh, 3 cosine squared minus 1. Is this what you want us to do? Uh, I don't know how to do with this. I don't know how to do with this. Minus. So this is, this is uh, 3 sine of x. And then on this portion here, we get like cosine of x. What do I do here? Because, oh my god, this is nasty. <laughs> this is actually disgusting. Uh, uh, uh. More trick identities. Oh god. <coughs> but essentially, you, you get the idea. You separate this in terms of sine of x's and then uh you get your yeah uh i am too lazy to do this actually but essentially this becomes nine fourths of like sine of three of x plus sine of x yeah and then whatever this is oh god this is like I don't know. <laughs> There's some some nasty some nasty shit here. Uh, 
Yeah. You, you get the idea. You plug it in. Um, you get like 9 eighths x of sine 3x, whatever, uh, plus what? 9 fourths minus 3 halves. That's. Oh, no, no, it'll be 9 eighths, technically. Minus 3 halves, which I don't want to do. Minus 3 halves. It's like negative 3. Uh, <laughs> and so this is like 6. Of like pi over two, yeah. So this would be like three pi over eight, yeah. That's what Wolfram Alpha says. Okay. Oh, 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 god! This wasn't even the last thing to grow, and oh my god, that was terrible. All right, let's keep on going. Now, of course, this does not look like a Dirichlet integral, but we can format it in terms of the Dirichlet integral by doing integration by parts. So let's go ahead and do that. Right, you have negative 1 over x. This becomes negative sine over x, technically. And so here we have 1 minus cosine of x over negative x. From 0 to infinity, this is just going to equal to 0 with some squeeze there and whatever. And then uh, we just get our regular Dirichlet integral here. So this whole integral is just pi over 2. Okay? Oh god, what is this? Alright, let's calm down and just see what's going on. Ah, so I see in this term this is just a Dirichlet integral. And then here it's just this looks like a basic u substitution. Let's see if u equals one over x. This is going to be pi over two plus zero to infinity of e to the negative u du. I believe this is just pi over two plus one. Let's see, as intimidating as intimidating as this looks, it's just a very simple integral. Oh dear God. <laughs> okay. Again, we calm down. Let's see, 1 plus sine of x. Imagine this as 1 plus sine 2x, but instead it's 1 plus sine x. So that means that this would equal to cosine x over 2, so sine of x over 2 uh, squared. So in this case, we would have 0 to infinity. Uh, as you can see, the square root would cancel out, and we see that the cosine of x over 2 would cancel out. So we would end up with having sine of x over 2 over x. So remember what I said about constants. You can just ignore it, because it's just going to cancel out. So this is equal to pi over 2. Okay, this looks awkward, right? But this is actually very sneaky. It's a little hard to see. It's very hard to see, but... As awkward as this looks, this if you just multiply top and bottom by e to the x, aha! Now you can see that this is just a simple Dirichlet integral. From 0 to infinity, we see that this is sine of u over u. So this is simply just pi over 2. Okay, this almost looks like a Dirichlet integral. However, we have a 1 over x. So what do we do with that 1 over x? Well, if you just test it out, let u equal 1 over x, then, well, this is x equal 1 over u, du uh, over u squared, negative, is going to equal to dx. And this negative is just going to flip the, switch the bounds, which is going to stay the same, sine of u, over 1 over u, but then we have du 
and the u square, so this cancels out. And it's just going to be the same Dirichlet integral, so this is just pi over 2 as well. Whoa! What is this? Alright, let's actually simplify this just to, it's just to make us uh, to easily see what's going on. So we see this is cosine of x. Oh, wait a minute. Um, oh, okay, actually, I, I see what's going on. Uh, minus sine of x. Let me reformat this. And then here, on this other side, it's plus sine of x or x. So we know this is Dirichlet integral, pi over 2. Plus, but what is this? This here is a quotient rule. This is just quotient rule. So this is actually, uh, this, is, this would be like uh, sine of x, yeah. Sine of x over x. That's what this is. And so now, from 0 to infinity, you know, this is the, uh, a very famous limit. Yeah, plug in infinity equals to 0, plug in uh, 0, it's going to equal to 1. So this answer is going to be pi over 2 minus 1. All right, this is our last integral. This is very tricky. So let's just calm down and let's just kind of think what to do. So we have a tangent of x inside. So there's we must have to do u equal tangent x somehow. But then du is equal to secant square of x. OK. Well. What happens if we do, let's see, we have secant square of x, but if we divide by u, this would, let's see, this would become what? This is cosine of cosine squared, let's see, this cancels out. Uh, we get like, what? This, sine 2x, aha, uh -huh. so, Pretty much, if we do u times x, so then du over u is going to equal to dx, this is dx, uh, 2 sine 2x. Okay. Then we can just put this 2 here. All right. So this would equal like 2u du uh, sine over u. And then uh, tangent of pi over 2, this is infinity, so now we have half of pi over 2, and this is going to equal to pi over 4. Alright you guys, that is actually, this is actually um, our last lesson of this series. This is integration be training for intermediates. This, this is pretty much about everything you pretty much just need to know for intermediate level integration B. Um, I think this was quite a long series. <laughs> but I mean, there's still a lot more techniques. Stay tuned and subscribe and get that notification button so that you can uh, get notified whenever I start posting for the advanced series. So I'm excited for that. And that's where we'll start getting into things like King's Rule, Ninja Substitution, and other very sneaky advanced techniques. All right? So, yeah. I just want to thank you guys for bearing with me. And I hope this whole integration retraining series is very helpful and uh, helps you a lot to prepare for highly competitive integration beats. So, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.